Hello and welcome to Fully Charged News. I'm Robert Llewellyn. And I'm Johnny Smith. And we're very excited to be here. We're filming this in the Milton Keynes EV Experience Centre. Experience. And we are experiencing EVs. There's one there, there's one there. There's one there. There's, there's, there's one, one there. there. There's one there. So we're surrounded by EVs, so it felt appropriate, didn't it? But what I'm so excited about, this bit of news, is that there's going to be a new EV joining this uh, group of EVs that are in here. Yeah. I think next year. Early next year. 2019. And it is yes. one that I know that a lot of people who watch Fully Charged have seen and commented positively on, which is it is the Honda Urban EV. I, th I don't know if it's got a proper name. I think it's the Urban EV, isn't it? It was the Urban EV, and it was uh, the beginning of last year that we saw yeah. it. When you, when you walk around this car, it just looks so right and desirable. It's just, it's hit the nail on the head with regards to design for me. And, and the fact that Honda have said they're going to make it largely unchanged. So in other words, presume, presume it will look like this, but with, with rear view, conventional rear view mirrors, conventional door handles, that kind of stuff. But as soon as people saw it, everyone went, that's the one. Because I yeah. think that is a perfectly, I think it's a really legitimate criticism of the automotive industry in general. Yeah. And as we've experienced firsthand, what, what are most big car companies making? Great big SUV, big heavy, sort of Tesla Model X competitors. Yeah. Yeah. They're not making small urban cars. You no. know, that, uh, and that's all we're hearing about is coming out now. I mean, that we're surrounded by effectively what are relatively small urban cars, which are great, which yeah. are available. But it, we need more of them. And that one just, it just somehow... It's just a great piece of it, design, yeah, that, regardless of its propulsion, yeah. really. Yeah. I, I had a good tour of it with the designer yeah. at Tokyo. And even then, people were still absolutely crazy about it because... Yeah. A, Honda, finally, yeah. getting into the, uh, the EV market after so long. You know, they were the, they were the innovators. But the first hybrid is a Honda. Yeah. yeah, exactly. They beat the Prius, just. Yeah. Um, and they've gone very quiet yeah. and, and a bit flaccid. Yeah. So to see them coming back at, into full EV, but with something that looks great, has charisma, um, not overly egg design. Yeah, yeah, so simple. Hallelujah, yeah. 2019. What, what, what's Early the... 2019, they say. And, yeah. and, and this is in Europe. This isn't just in, in Japan, which is yeah. great. Yeah, so they're start, going to start taking orders at the beginning of next year. Right. I mean, we don't, yeah, obviously all those things that we don't know about, you know, the range, battery size, charging. Actual stuff, price. Actual price. Yeah. Yeah, it's a brilliant small urban EV. It's only £68,000 <laughs> and it's got a 101 mile range yeah. if it's warm. You've got a good chance here, Honda. Please don't I think muck so. it up. Yeah, don't muck it up. Get don't muck it up. Right. And contact us because we want to prod it a bit more. Yeah, yes. Yes, we'd like to prod it. Don't anyway, on with the news. On with the news. Well, I think the other one that I, that I, my, uh, I caught my attention earlier this year, or late last year, was cobalt, was the issues around cobalt, the issues around mining in uh, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, yeah. which is, you know, I think it has been properly classified by the UN as the most politically unstable country on earth. It's not a race you want to win. I know. No, it isn't a race you want to win. And no. also, they've just had an Ebola outbreak in northern... Uh, DRC. So, you know, it's, it's a, I would think, a difficult country to, yeah. to work in and to extract cobalt in. Yeah. All the issues around cobalt, the price of cobalt has gone, off, gone through the roof. It's gone very expensive. And then suddenly Elon Musk, of course, has to be him. Says, Who, who's he? he? He runs this little car company in America. Is it a startup? <laughs> it's a startup. <laughs> <laughs> Not many people have heard of him. I mean, it's very inside baseball because he doesn't get any PR. Okay, okay. I'll look him up. <laughs> yeah, look, Google yeah. him. You yeah. might find you've got to go to like the third or fourth page on a Google search. Okay, all right, yeah. <laughs> and what's he said? He, so, so he's saying we're, we're going to stop using cobalt, which is uh, we think we can get cobalt to almost nothing. That's the quote in their batteries. So they're going to be uh, lithium nickel, and this is what they're going to be making. The research that's going into battery chemistry and battery longevity. Yeah, yeah. I just saw some of it yesterday, so that, that, that is amazing. We'll do a report on this soon. The Faraday Fund is a, is a British government fund of £250 million, pounds, which is quite a lot of money. It's a hell of a lot of money. Just to a, try and a find... A quarter of a billion is how they say it. Is that £250 million? A quarter of a billion? Yes, it yeah. is, yes. Yeah. yes. I had to really think about <laughs> that. I had to look up at the sky yeah. while I was thinking. <laughs> But that, so into researching into uh, battery technologies and, that, and the absolute drive of that is not so much energy density, it's all about cost and availability of materials. So cobalt is a difficult, you know, it's, one, it's on the list of can we make this without Well, obviously that? what you want to do with all these things is to try and make things as local as you can yeah. to reduce transportation yes. and to not you know, plunder the earth for 
minerals yeah. that are ultimately going to be um, extinct. Yeah, I, mean, I, don't think, I, I don't think there's actually a, a danger of running out of cobalt. It's not like there's a shortage of it, yeah. because it's part, it's part when you extract it, it's also the stuff where you get copper. It's, it, it, so there's huge copper mines already in, yeah. in uh, DRC. And copper's expensive. And copper's expensive. Yeah, and the copper is needed in, electric, in all electronics. Yeah. But there are, it seems to be fairly clear that, that there's going to be batteries that are, the, the one we're, we're going to see soon, a sodium, lithium sodium battery, and I go, I have to think, what's sodium? It's salt. Salt. Yeah. Lithium salt. Lithium salt. And there's lithium... Um, Lysalt. What's, what's sand? What's that? Silica. Yes. So there's lithium silica of batteries as well, as well as lithium... There's loads of them. Lithium al alloy. There's lots of different ones. Most of them still explode when you charge them <laughs> in well, laboratories. This, yeah. But that, they'll get... They'll, I, think, I think we'll see a breakthrough sooner. I used to think it was going to be 10 years. I think it'll actually be sooner. That well, I suppose as the popularity of the cars... Yeah. Uh, and, and the any market other, is massive. And I mean, any other electrical it, device, yeah. which is, of which is hundreds of millions. Yeah. And static storage for um, grid balancing and all that. But I mean, it's just interesting that a big company that are producing huge amounts of the highest density, no one argues that Tesla batteries have the highest density, energy density of any battery yeah. made at the moment. I mean, they're doing it from an economic point of view to make them cheaper because yeah. the cobalt element is the expensive part. Well, everyone will follow them if yeah. history is to be uh, repeated. Yeah. yeah. I should think they will. Let's move on. Let's move uh, on. I like this story. I thought you, I kind of thought you yeah, would. And I, yeah. I would too, because I've only, have you, you've probably spent time in them and driven them. I've driven one once and I, I loved it. I do like motorhomes. <laughs> motorhomes. Or Motor RVs for our American audience. The scale here. of it. It's, it's when you, I drove one in, in California, in, yeah. you know, on a desert road. It's the absolute thing. And it was just huge. I could barely see the far side of it. It's a flat. I mean. <laughs> yeah, you're, it, you're driving an apartment. It's London real estate. You know, that's <laughs> worth proper money. And uh, I'm, someone brought one to my wedding, which is oh. always interesting. Um, but Winnebago, who is the household name, people yeah, refer to them as oh, Winnebago. Yeah. It's the same way people refer to vacuum cleaners as Hoovers. Yeah. Um, they're America's most iconic RV manufacturer, has just signed a deal with Motive Power Systems, which converts medium duty truck chassis to full electric power. Yeah. So that means loads of RVs, um, like mobile health clinics, uh, mobile libraries. Mobile libraries, yeah. They're probably going to be the target market for this. But on the other hand, of course, RVs are built to travel, yeah. to explore. So, and, and when you get to your uh, destination, you have to have an electrical hookup. Yeah, they've all got so, power, power outlets. Yeah, yeah and, and they're used to 230 volt hookup. Yeah. So this could be perfect. Yeah. And, and also there's more and more people retiring, selling up, you know, downsizing the house and buying RVs. It's, that, it's my fantasy, and it's, it's getting more tragic as Is the years pass, to be, to be a grey nomad in Australia, because there's a, a, a measurable demographic of human beings that don't have a house, yeah. but live in huge, huge motor and drive, they just drive all year round, yeah. round Australia. And you want to be one of them? I want to do that, I don't want to do it, but I want to do it in an electric Winnebago. I want to get the biggest electric Winnebago you can get, a you really a, a, a ostentatious start one. it now. I've been in one with a marble kitchen, real marble. Oh. So obviously not a great regard for weight. <laughs> Actual real I'm just going to drive across Europe and I have a marble kitchen. That was from Green Car Reports, actually. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so there's a lot of RV drivers um, who obviously spend a lot of money on fuel. Yes. Because there's no what RV. they use. No, you don't RVs get RVs are all huge engines, V10s, yeah. V12s, yeah. V8s. Um, and of course, there's loads of storage underneath for, um, for batteries. Plenty of room for batteries. Because they often them. are converted yeah. to LPG. Yeah. So this could be the next phase. If there's anyone out there with an electric converted motorhome, get in touch. Yeah, or oh yeah, if you know anyone, yeah, do get Because A, in touch. it's his fantasy, yes. and B, I think it's quite relevant to the show. Um, on to the next thing. For, uh, now, this is, I think, is interesting because I think there's, as we know, a lot of negative uh, press about Volkswagen, particularly with the Dieselgate scandal, particularly with, I think, actual criminal proceedings uh, have been instigated yeah, against Amer this. Yeah, America the, the has... In, has in America. Yeah, they've actually prosecuted the, 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 name, the boss it? of VW. Is it yeah. uh, Winterkorn? Winterkorn, Is yes. it Martin Winterkorn? Martin Winterkorn. So, In a bit of trouble, probably he, chatting with his lawyers. Yeah, I mean, America have, 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 have chased him down and actually said that he was aware of what happened. Yeah. And so he is personally responsible at the top of the pyramid. Yeah. Uh, well, so off the I back just, of that. So I thought there's plenty, of, there's plenty of negative stories about VW and we're not denying them we're acknowledging them yeah. right now but i think this is quite interesting because this is God, it's just unbelievable figures they've just announced that it has already awarded a 25 billion dollar contract for battery sales 25, so, billion, 25 billion dollars billion that's a contract dollars. that is, isn't, isn't it? it 
Did, did they sign contract the contract, like darling? Oh, they did. That's good. How much? Yeah. Twenty-five billion. <laughs> right, Nando's now. <laughs> Invite your friends. No more than twelve. Yeah. <laughs> Nando's straight up. I'd be down there like a rocket. Yeah, yeah. So it's oh my God! No, it's... sorry. The German automaker has announced this week. That's what it caught my eye. Uh, uh, that is now doubled. It's now doubled. So it's forty-eight billion dollars they're spending on. Forty-eight billion dollars on 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 battery Just supplies. Just basically acquiring batteries for their cars. So... Goodness me! They've already made the announcement at their annual general meeting in 2018 for shareholders. Um, it, which was on the 9th of May. Yeah. It's building the production plan called Roadmap E. Yeah. Announced last year. By 2025, they hope the production plan will lead to 3 million electric vehicles per, per year, year between all of their brands, Volkswagen, Audi, Porsche, Skoda, etc. cetera. Say that. that is, no, it is, it is, I think, quite big news. That's from Electrek, that wow. story. We, that's quite good to give a little, a little nod to that's the, the sources. I mean, so you've got that, you've got the, the Mercedes-Benz investment. Yeah. Eight and a half billion pounds. Is that what they're on, doing? On, on their electric right. um, brand. Because actually the, now, that, cause when, you've, when I, you first said that, I went, God, eight and a half billion. But actually, what Volkswagen are doing is kind of... That basically huge. means the Germans are going big yeah. into yes. EV. The, yes, the they combination of Volkswagen and Audi Group and Mercedes-Benz, think of all the billions yeah. already. Yeah, and it's not just cars as well. I think that's very important. It's trucks and buses, particularly with Mercedes. Yeah. They're, they're going into that big time. Yes, I can't wait to drive a Mercedes lorry. Yeah, yeah. Ac Actros E or whatever it's called. Please, yeah. electric lorries. Yeah. Come hither. Bring it on. Well, I mean, that's, I've just been in Firenze in Italy. And uh, apart from the fact that most of the taxes are, not most, that's not fair, but a big proportion of the taxes, they're all uh, hybrids or they're Nissan Leafs. There's, there's okay. literally hundreds of Nissan Leaf taxes. And there's charges at the airport. I saw that when I was leaving for that's them to good. top up while they're waiting for clients. Well, that is good. Isn't that marvellous? Better than just smoking and leading yeah. a diesel Passat running. <laughs> Uh, not that they don't all do that. They don't. Just not all taxi drivers right. do that, but it's it has good, been yeah, known. Yeah. <laughs> this one, I just want to work out how we get to Norway because I want to have a go on this. The electric catamaran. It's my favourite country, Robert. Yeah, it's brilliant. But this is a, a, a pure electric uh, car ferry. I mean, I've heard of. A, I think there's a, there's more than one, but this one is the latest one and very. I mean, it's amazing kind of modern look yeah. to it. Um, electric catamaran. It's made Nor by Brudin Aa. I don't know how you say that. That's I, I'm amazing. I'm sure we can be corrected by he our many Norwegians. He was the keyboardist in Aha. <laughs> sure of it. I bet he was. He do, was they have, do they have the big quiffs? They still uh -huh. look stylish now. Do they? Bloody hell they do. Wow. Yeah. Morton. Yeah. Mags. Morton. <laughs> Mags, Morton. My wife will kill me because they were her favourite band, which Where? is... She made a banner once and went to their concert. Oh, isn't that sweet? But they were—they were—they were, they were, they were, they they were, were cool. huge. Yeah, yeah. Aha! Uh -huh. cool. You can't sniff at aha. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, um, they made black lace look <laughs> even worse than they were. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, Norwegian company, electric yeah. catamaran, forty-two meter long, carbon fibre. So it's one point eight megawatts, megawatt hours. And this is for this is for going across going Norwegian across fjords, fjords. And, and, I, like that. and that's how you have to travel in Norway. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of fjords. A lot of I mean, fjord travel. Yeah. But what I love is the, work, the, the way they've worked it out is that they've got, uh, a, they've got so they're on board the actual ferry is a 1.8 megawatt hour battery, but at either end is a 2.4 megawatt hour battery that is charging. So that's charging all the time right. off, the, off the grid. But then when the, the boat comes in, it's 20 minutes. It can is, do it a 20 minute is this boat cabled? No, no, there's another, there's a battery on the, on the dock that then oh, hooks in, oh. charges the battery on the boat. While it's With loading and unloading. It will unload a lot of juice while they're taking the cars off, putting the cars on, 20 minutes, turns around, goes back again. The stats of this boat, it's, it's the future of the fjords is equipped, it's, that's its name, yeah. the future of the fjords. <laughs> the future of the fjords. It's, is equipped <laughs> with a 1.8 megawatt hour battery, two 450 kilowatt electric motors. It will operate at speeds of 60 knots, which equates to 18.4 miles an hour, yeah. for 30 nautical miles, which is 34.5 actual miles. You are miles. so good at the, the stats here. I'm good when I read them. <laughs> yeah. Before the boat must be recharged, doing two trips every day, it will be tasked with 700 yearly round trips along the spectacular UNESCO World Heritage listed fjord route between Flam, might say it in a slightly different way, yeah. and Goodvangen. Goodvangen? It could be. Yeah. He was in Aha as well. Yeah. <laughs> While he, was, the he was the road manager. Yeah, he was the roadie. <laughs> While the future of the fjords is studying, the 20 minute fast charging capability makes us impressed. Yeah. So, that, but what is interesting is wow. the distance between Dover and Calais, 
yeah. I believe, the nautical distance, because it's a, it is technically 22 miles between the two land masses, but I think it's about a 20, 26 mile journey yeah. from Dover to Calais. That would do it easily. Oh it's goodness. got four miles left. So you could have cross channel electric ferries today. That's big news. It is, isn't it? I mean, I think that's what we're going to see. It's becoming more and more clear that what we're going to see before the real mass adoption of electric cars is electric, is big electric things, strangely. Yep. It's buses, trucks, ferries, yep. you know, all that sort of stuff. It's the UPS truck that yeah. pulled up outside my house this morning. Right. Yes. A, a diesel Mercedes exactly. Sprinter. They are going to be electric. And in, he goes in the 200 next, metres two to the next house. Yeah, and stops again. Climbs out, opens the back doors. Yeah. It, why is that not electric? Yeah, it should be. Uh, this one, I, I, I was talking to someone yesterday who's got a Hyundai Ionic Pure Electric. Ionic. And he's, he was just raving about it. And he's also, he reminded me of it, that he's so grateful he got it whenever he ordered it, you know, a year ago or whatever. Yeah, yeah. He's been driving and he said he's loved it. It's brilliant. But there's this enormous shortage, like a, a year-long waiting list for, the, for one of the best electric cars we've driven for a long time. Yeah. And they're saying they haven't got the batteries. That's what they're... they're which is the same excuse that Volkswagen have used with the, with the e-Golf. The e, the, there's a waiting list for the e-Golf. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like they've become a victim of their own success yeah. instantly. Yeah, in, this is in America because this is a story from Electrek again. Yeah. little nod to Electrek. Uh, so this is a story about the, the fact that the sales teams are being encouraged to to push the hybrid and plug-in hybrid versions of the Ionic, which are both really good. Rather than the rather pure. Rather than the pure electric, because they can't get the pure electric. So they're trying to, yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, it's particularly, if, I mean, it's going to become crippling if they're, you know, in a year's time when there is a Honda Urban EV, the new Leaf, the 60 kilowatt hour Leaf yep. with thermal battery management. Just thought I'd mention that. Just put that out there, Robert. Put that out there. The new BMW ranges, the new Volkswagen range. You know, once those start to come out, then yeah. if you go, oh, we haven't got the batteries, that's why they're chucking all this money at batteries because yeah. they, they all desperately need them. Yeah. Audi. Um, now, Audi, that is great. I love this story. This is, this is big news. Audi aims to sell approximately yeah. 800,000 fully electric cars and plug-ins <laughs> by the year uh, 2025. So that's... Uh, okay, over a quarter of a million cars. They've, they've, they're already investing yeah, the billions of euros. Yeah. Um, I yeah, like has, the it, fact that our ambition has always been and will continue to be Vorsprung durch Technik. Yes, exactly. That's Which right. nobody really understands. No. Uh, uh, well, it means leaping forward through technology. Through, does that conclude? That oh, no, does. No. I think that is, I was trying to keep it fairly brief, but we should do our thanks. And I, you can do the first one because we're going to do it. We're just going to thank a few, a handful a healthy handful of Patreon supporters yeah. who uh, donate $10 a month or more to, to keep Fully Charged going. Um, it's very, very good that you do it. That's it is, yeah. We best. couldn't do it without you. Thank you, Nick Hills. Nick Hills. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Lezek Grizzle. It, that's how I would have said it. Yeah. Thank you, Les. Um, but then you've got quite a good oh, one. Oh, yeah. And thank you, Tamas Z Caesar. I think that's Caesar. Probably... Tamas yeah. Caesar. Tamas Caesar. Caesar. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Mark Crocker. Thank you very much, Jonathan Allsop. Thank you, uh, Philip John Smith. Thank you, Nigel Critton. Thank you, Paul Fizz. Fitz. <laughs> Fit. Because it isn't. I've spilt some water on the typing, and it looked like Paul Fizz, but it's Paul Fitz. I you beg your pardon. You spilt some fizz. <laughs> thank you very much, Michael Rao. And finally, thank you very much. Paul Genge. That's a great name. That is a good name, isn't it? Paul Genge. Genge. I reckon Paul Genge would have been the management uh, <laughs> uh, executive who toured AHA. No, Faraday Past. Faraday Past. Paul Genge would have been there in the office. Uh, we're booking uh, Faraday Past <laughs> for a big tour this year. That's right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> As usual, 11% commission. And, uh, sorry. Off Can the you, gross. This is Paul Gedge. You know yes. who I am, don't you? you? Know, you know <laughs> yeah, I don't. Sorry, Paul, we're making fun of your name, and it's not right. Um, and always, it is a very good sign, as soon as we get onto Faraday Past, we know it's time to wind it up. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Yeah. Do have a subscribe uh, uh, to us and press the bell. Is it a bell? Yes, um, so that you get alerts <laughs> when new videos come up. Will yeah, you? the bell thing. I always forget about the bell thing. Press the bell thing, do subscribe, and have a look at the little Patreon link, and as Johnny said. Yeah, if you've enjoyed it, please watch us again. Or something. Yeah.
Hello, welcome to a little bit of a special fully charged update. We're currently in Amsterdam at Re EV Evolution, Revolution, which is a, a conference, a kind of business conference uh, about the, uh, the coming transformation of the transportation industry. So there's really a lot of people here from the charging infrastructure world, not really so many from car manufacturers, but a lot of government people, a lot of people from literally all over the world talking about how you, you encourage the adoption of electric vehicles and things like that. And we've just seen an amazing presentation by a man called Tony Sieber. And we, we, we might be able to talk to him later on, but I think the important thing about this is it's quite a complicated topic. What Tony Sieber is predicting is a real rapid transformation of the way we move around. And this includes not owning cars, and it includes fully electric cars and it includes solar power generation and uh, electricity storage using batteries and it's all to do with the falling costs of those things and the rising acceptance and adoption of them and that is not an easy thing to communicate in two or three minutes like with us having a chat about it uh, and so he does this very uh, popular lecture search for it on YouTube and you'll find it very easily but uh, it's quite challenging it's there's a lot of people are skeptical about what he's saying it's not uh, you know he doesn't really know what's going to happen in the future but his predictions are based on very very well researched data he hasn't just made it up we've also heard from Christina Boo who is the uh, the kind of CEO of the Electric Vehicle Owners Association in Norway. Norway's got the highest number of electric vehicles in any country in the world, and their big challenge is charging infrastructure. No big surprise there. People in Norway don't talk about range anxiety. They don't talk about the cost of the vehicles, because in Norway, an electric vehicle is generally cheaper to buy new than a petrol or diesel one because of their taxation systems. That's funded by their enormous oil revenues. So there's lots of lovely contradictions in there. But people all over Norway. It's, it's now 40% uh, of new car sales are, are electric, and, and that's pure electric. This isn't uh, plug-in hybrid. Plug-in hybrid sales are dropping. Pure electric sales are going up all around the world. That's another interesting thing I learned today. I didn't know that, because you sort of think of plug-in hybrids as being the big thing. So it has been an exciting day to come here. I've got to chair a really frightening meeting this afternoon that's uh, closed and only really clever people are going to be there and they've let me in to chair it which is a big mistake because that will mess it right up but there's some amazing people here and there's such exciting things going on in this world that I hope we'll cover in Fully Charged in more detail but it is it's a televisual decision I don't think it's that interesting just to have you know to, for me to interview loads of people here that you know and it's just some talking heads you need to see what they're doing and a lot of that is quite hard to see because it's all about infrastructure back end it's all about the back end, which we can't really show, which is how you organize the payment of charging when you charge your car and you plug it in, you use your card, how we can simplify that, how we can make it frictionless. That's the big challenge. And there are people here that are working on systems where you'll have one thing, one thing, that's all I pray for, it's one thing, and you can use any charger in Europe or North America. That's all we need. But then it's also about owning cars. Are we really gonna carry on owning cars? It's such a stupid waste of time when our utilization of those cars is four or five percent of the year, it's kind of stupid owning it. I've got two cars. I know neither of them are being used. If they are, someone's nicked them. You know, so that's the position I'm in and it's ridiculous. I shouldn't have two cars. I'm, it's ridiculous I've got two cars. So that stuff's fascinating. There's, uh, so anyway, I won't go on now because I've got to go and do my panel. <laughs> uh, but that's all. So if, if you've been watching this and there's something more interesting we can add to it, I, I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have been, thank you for watching. <laughs>